Good evening, friends. Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live, and uh, we definitely got some things going on here. Uh, quite a few things, actually. Everything from uh, Laura, the hurricane that is massive as can be, to uh, Russian forces engaging on multiple occasion U.S. forces. Uh, earthquakes continuing to uh, spiral seemingly out of control. Uh, but anyway, wanted to kind of first touch bases with you on this right here. Uh, a lot of people are already picking up on this earlier today. This is a Russian convoy in Syria, eastern Syria, and they are continuing to challenge U.S. forces in the area, including using a helicopter uh, to swoop down on U two U.S. Uh, uh, vehicles there. And, of course, U.S. troops are definitely outgunned, outnumbered, uh, when it comes to this particular incident here. And what's going to happen, I'll speed this along here, is that they're going to ram one of the U.S. vehicles there, uh, injuring four U.S. soldiers. Uh, this is what takes place there. There it is. You barely could catch it out of the corner of your screen there. They rammed that U.S. vehicle there. Uh, you know, quite, quite honestly, it's provoking U.S. troops there. We are going to end up in a war with Russia, and uh, it's just obvious we're headed in that direction there. Pentagon has kind of remained kind of quiet on that. U.S. service members injured in Syria after skirmish with Russian forces, but they really kind of kept that press down. But that wasn't the only time. We also had a situation here that happened in and around uh, August the 24th with uh, helicopters coming to try to push U.S. troops back. Watch this one here. And as you can see, right there in front of the screen, you've got a couple of uh, a couple of U.S. Uh, trucks there, and they are trying to push the American presence out of there by hovering over them with their uh, Russian Russian attack helicopter. Uh, doesn't you know? Like I said, these things are ongoing over there. But as you know, I mentioned the other day, there were about uh, 40 vehicles in a convoy of U.S. troops that crossed over into Syria while the blackout took place there. And then I ran across the Times of Republic.com, presence of Pakistani ISIS cadres in Syria revealed. This is a whole new thing coming out there. On August 27, the United States backed Syrian Democratic Forces have shared a list of 29 Pakistanis who have who are in custody for fighting for the ISIS, according to media reports. A, a, a per the list, as many as nine Pakistani ISIS cadres are women, of whom three have the citizenship either Turkey or Sudan. Isn't that interesting? Sudan. Wow, what do you know? Israel got them fighting wars over there for ISIS now. Among the, among the men, one has the citizenship of Canada. This report has surfaced amid Pakistan's recent attempts to avoid a uh, demotion from the Financial Action Task Force gray list to the blacklist during the upcoming October plenary meeting. Pas Pakistan on Friday imposed sanctions on more than 88 terrorists associated with different terrorist groups, including Daesh, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Pakistan media reported. So, seems like things are starting to heat up over there once again. Uh, now, this turning the attention here, and, and listen, to me, this young man that was, uh, I believe, 17 years old, ended up killing two people. Oh, wrong one. Uh, let's see, I thought I had the right Twitter piece in here. Doesn't, well, maybe, I don't know if I do or don't. Let me just see here. Uh at any rate there, this young man that uh, shot and killed two people there, 17 years old, is going to be tried as an adult. But then this video here, there's another one that surfaced as well. I thought I had both of them, but for some reason, I don't seem to have the other one there. The first one that I had actually shows him being chased himself. Uh, and that's when 
he engaged one of the people that tried to attack him. He shot him, and that's the boy that got shot in the head. Uh, so we have all seen this. Then thing. we have uh, where the people are coming after him, and it appears to be that they're just trying to beat up on him. But the guy that did this here, this particular breakdown, uh, shared by Vincent Kennedy, does a breakdown on that. And I want you to kind of see this because I think it is interesting what he shows here because he was dealing with people that were armed that came against him. Right? They're chasing him down. He falls on the floor. They obviously try to attack him and then he shoots. Now let's see some pictures. This is assault with a deadly weapon right here. One of the guys closest to him had a weapon on him. You can he see it right the on the at screen. Him. Look at it. Pointed Literally at his pointed head. the weapon at him after he was chased away. Look at the weapon again. Assault with a deadly weapon. Remember, he was being chased away. He was running away from them, and they were chasing him and attacking him. So, you know, just some kind of weird stuff going on, friends. You know, not everything is, is as it appears. Uh, I know there's some people saying that this was uh, fake. I, I can tell you from experience, I know when I was an officer, one of the first cases I ever dealt with was a gunshot wound to the head. And the young man that was shot in the head, that is definitely not a staged video. Uh, seen it before, know what it's like, and I just don't believe that. Now, listen, we're going into now looking at this Hurricane Laura that's about to pound Texas and Louisiana. And I kind of find this very interesting, the impact area, especially in light with the, with the fact of when we're looking at weather weapons that are being used on the United States. If you remember, I shared with you that one of my sources told me about a disruption in the food supply chain in November, November as well as other commodities. I mentioned at that time because there was no mention of what the other commodities would be, but I shared with you guys, I couldn't help but believe that it would be a disruption in gas as well as lumber supplies. That was my thought, two of my thoughts there. And oddly enough, this hurricane with 150 mile an hour winds going to hit possibly as a cat four is going to majorly damage the refineries in Texas and Louisiana. Guess what? There goes the, uh, the, the, the problem with fuel in the nation right there. Then take a look at its track that they're showing for this thing. All right. Here's the track right there. It's going to go north then, come across Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, you know, basically the winds causing destruction for northern Mississippi, Alabama. There again, another food belt uh, area as well being targeted yet by no, and of course easily it can be blamed on a storm right it's so easy so convenient well yeah you know, I mean, some people feel like oh steve you're you're you're, you're just fear-mongering you do this to get views no listen i would much rather tell you things about what's going on in the middle east and keep you updated on things like that last thing i want to do is have to get into the things that are happening in america and 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 all this information it it, 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 it's bothersome because, you know, you want to see everything go well and go normal and things like that, but it's just nothing is, seems to be normal anymore. Uh, there was a brother on Twitter that reminded me of First Thessalonians uh, 5.3. He said, you know, Steve, you did this one video and it kind of reminded me of when you, uh, the scripture of Thessalonians. And uh, let me just see there. I hadn't, I hadn't pulled that up as of yet, but I'd like to pull it up. I was actually working on something in Corinthians the other day. I, wanted, I do want to share a message from Corinthians 11. Uh, very interesting. Judge not, oh no, sorry. That's where I get, when he gets down to the part where he, where he talks about uh, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. That's really been on my heart, and I'm really looking forward to bringing that message out. Uh, with you guys. Let's see. First Corinthians, no, First Thessalonians 5. Oh, goodness. What was it? 5. Uh, uh, where was that at? 
Let's see there. That was Brother Denver shared that with me. Brother Denver, where you got? First turn. Okay, five three. All right. So let's go over here. So it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, if we look at this, reading it again, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and shall and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that they, they should overtake you as a thief. Right? And we could apply this even 2,000 years ago, if you think about it, with the destruction of uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD. But if you take and put this in modern times, you know, and this is what the brother was sharing with me, is that, you know, you, I did the message there talking about the uh, these these false prophets of today constantly telling everybody, oh, everything's going to be okay, don't worry. We're going to go through a little hard time, but it'll be short, and then it'll all pass. No, it's not going to pass. And... That sudden destruction, I do believe, is coming as well. Uh, just, just a matter of time. So we get back and we see that track of the weather there did that. Uh, USGS, the, the, the course, I just keep looking at this because so many weird things are happening. And, of course, everything is not too big of earthquakes going on right now. But, again, I see a lot of them down here in the islands there, off to the east of Cuba, Puerto Rico, places like that. Had uh, 4.5 down there. Uh, around Jamaica, you still seeing a bunch of them over here, uh, just uh, down in, in Mexico there, and also in Southern California area. Uh, you know, just a lot of activity like that. And then, of course, going back around Japan and those areas there. So watching that more closely, something I don't normally do, but just kind of watching things to see how things are going uh, so we can kind of keep you guys updated from what we're finding out. So at any rate, listen. I know things are going to get more and more eventful uh, as the weeks and the months move through. And I do want to encourage you to continue to prepare your family uh, and, and listen, stock up on food. It doesn't hurt. Always look at it like this here. If for no other reason, even if we say, oh, well, Steve, I don't believe these things are really right what you're saying. You know, I think things will pass over. Uh, Trump will help get us all out of the mess. Okay, listen. If you want to believe that, that's perfectly okay with me. It doesn't hurt my feelings. But think of it like this. Think of it as a bad hurricane coming to your neighborhood and you might be without power for weeks on end. At least, friends, at least for the sake of that. Or a tornado strikes your neighborhood or this derecho storms, which are hurricane force winds coming across the Northwest. Everybody has an excuse to stock up for at least for the sake of another bad storm. And I've been told that derecho storm that's supposed to be so rare that I had warned you guys about back in March of this year, March this year, we were told we were going to see over 100 mile an hour winds up there around the Nebraska area. Sure enough, we saw it. And no doubt weather weapons. No doubt weather weapons. Uh, you know, and I can say that even more so because now some of the sources that I have are willing to admit weather weapons abilities by governments. That was our new source there. Uh, that was cannot be named that spoke of that. Check out Yana's channel as well, Rise Up Children of God. She did a new release uh, video there with uh, uh, FEMA engineer. And, and one thing I want to echo to, Yana says this in there, because some people do say, you know, oh, why do y'all have friends with FEMA people, things like that. Listen, a lot of people that work for these places are good people. People that I know in government, with the exception of Israel, are believers. They're trying to help you. They're trying because they ended up in a position where they're at uh, in power and knowledge and knowing things. They want to help people. These are good people. It's just like the military. How many people that are watching this broadcast are a part of the military? former military or in the military presently, or you have family in the military and you're really proud of the 
uh, serving our country. And I, you hear this all the time when you're out somewhere, and you see a military person, other people are saying, thank you for your service, things of this nature here. But in reality, if we really want to look at it, what have we done? We fought wars for Israel. We've destroyed countries and lives, countries that bore no threat whatsoever to the United States. Iraq, soon to be Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, where was really the justification? Oh, we have a war on terror, but we find out later, which they scrub all the evidence, that it wasn't these countries in the first place. So, but does that make our American troops evil people? No. Many good people join the military. It's a job, it's a career, and they believe they go in believing that they're doing a service for this country. And maybe even coming out, they don't even realize what they were involved in. Okay, so there's good people in all these walks of life, and they're trying to help us, especially with all this evil that's going on in this world today. And I do not care about sensationalism whatsoever. But if there's anything I can do to help you, or to share a little bit of insight of things that are being shared with us. That's our purpose. That's our reasoning behind it. So I say that too, because Yana did a, a really nice uh, video today sharing uh, yet another uh, in-depth message from a good friend of ours. He, he uh, put some things in writing so that we can share those things with you. And, uh, and Yana uh, does a good commentary on it. I think it'll be a blessing for you. So I'll put the link in there for you. And don't forget to sign up on these other channels. Remember, Israeli News Live, there's always a threat of this channel going down. First and foremost, one place that we are not censored on, and that is the app. Israeli News Live app, both Android and Apple products. Uh, originally, I didn't realize I only had one link in the description for you, but I've got both of them in there now. Bill always is there uploading the videos, taking care of things for us there. Uh, just does a remarkable job on that. And, and he normally loads videos not just from Israeli News Live, but from Yana's channel and other places as well. We'll have other links in there for you, including uh, Event Masters FX. And I, I'm mainly loading teachings there right now, but I'm sure I'll get into other things as well a little bit later. But you want to be also subscribed to Fact News Network. I do load news on Fact News Network that does not air here. And I mainly do that just so we keep things, a little content going there. So if something happens on Israeli News Live, you know where you can still continue to pick up the news that we're doing. Uh, Danun Institute. Uh, I like to put really in-depth teaching there. Uh, the one sometimes if they're not as in-depth, I put them here on Israeli News Live, but always be subscribed there because you never know what's going to happen. And of course, Rise Up Children of God. And we're also on a, several others, but they're all down there in the links below as backups, uh, uh, including a brand new tube. I just got uh, logged into that one as well. And uh, DLive. And I'm going to continue to do DLive. I'm not as fully into that every single day because there's so much we're trying to cover at one time. Anyway, thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Good evening.